Okay, so this is the first unit on the FIS 2320 Computing 2 uh, series on NumPy. Um, and we'll start off by talking about um, uh, what NumPy arrays are, uh, how an array is different from a list, and why uh, and when you want to use an array um, in preference over a list. Okay, so what's an array and when to use it. So um, hopefully at this point, you're familiar with the idea of Python variables having certain types, which can either be scalars, so single values, things like floats, ints, booleans, um, and then also things that are collections. So variables that can hold more than one value um, that you can index in some way to get at the individual values. And in Python, we distinguish these collections into two subtypes. So there's um, things which are called mappings, which basically means that you have some kind of key that lets you identify which value you're interested in, um, but then you don't have any control of what order those are being stored in. So you can't say that um, key one comes before key two. Um, I should add a note actually that in, in Python, the most common mapping type, which is the dictionary, um, actually do tend to always follow the same order. But um, in general, with a mapping, you don't have any guarantee. And then the other type of collection types you get are sequences, where the values have a definite order um, and you can access them by specifying which number you want in that, in that sequence. So you want the first element, the second element, and so on. Um, and the most common example of a sequence type of variable is a list. Um, okay, so if we actually think a little bit about what's going on when we're trying to access uh, an element in a list, we start realizing it's actually very, very complicated. Because in Python, you can store any type of data you like in a list. So each different element in the list can be whatever type of data you like, and it can be different um, from one element to the other. So you can have a list which has a, an integer, a float, and then it can even have a dictionary as an element of the list. Um, it can even have a list as an element of the list. Um, you can be anything you want. <clears throat> what that means, however, is that Python doesn't know in advance um, exactly what's going to be in that list, and therefore it's difficult for you to work out how much memory it needs to reserve to go and store that uh, list. So what it actually does is it stores um, uh, a list of places where it's going to find the data it needs to get for each element. So in, the, in other words, it's storing a list of memory addresses where each of those memory addresses itself is the memory address of, of where you're going to find the data. And that means that in order to go and look up an element in the list, well, first of all, you have to find the where the list is being stored in memory. Um, and you have to go to that memory location. Uh, and then you have to go and if you say you want to get to the fifth item of a list, you have to work your way through the list of memory locations where everything's being stored and find the fifth item. And you go, OK, right, that's the address of where the fifth item is being stored. So you go back and look in memory again where that is. Uh, and then you get the item and then you have to work out what data type it is and therefore how big it is and so on. And that's an awful lot of going backwards and forwards to memory. And it could be going all over the place in the computer's memory. And that actually turns out to be really quite a slow operation. And this is why Python lists are often described as being rather slow. The contrast is with an array. Now, an array is a sequence where we know in advance that all the elements have the same data type. And that means that we know how big each data element has to be. Um, and therefore, we can rather than storing a, a sequence of addresses where we're going to go and find where to look up the information, we can just store the information we're interested in. And that makes it an awful lot simpler to go and access the, the data we're interested in. So with an array, say um, an array of, of integers, an array of floats, um, if we want to look up the fifth item in that array, well, OK, we have to do the first bit again. We have to find where the array is being stored in memory. And we'll have to look up. The, the, that memory location. Um, hopefully that array will also go and tell us um, what the data type of each element is and therefore how big it is. So therefore we can just go to five times the size of each element to get to the address where, to get to the bit of memory where the fifth element is being stored and then we can retrieve the data. And that means that we've got much fewer levels of going back and forth between the main memory and so it's a bit faster. 
The other really big advantage with, array, with arrays comes down to what some of the optimizations that modern uh, CPUs are designed with. So modern CPUs are often designed to go and do vector maths processing, meaning they're designed to go and do the same mathematical operation with a whole range of data that's stored sequentially in memory. So because an array stores its data sequentially in memory, that means that when we come to do maths on arrays, we can use these very fast optimized vector operations in the CPU, and therefore it's very, very fast. So just to show you the, the kind of difference, you can get it very quickly from a, a picture like this. So um, on the right-hand side, we have the way a, a Python list is organized. And you can see that um, we start off with the, the kind of thing that says, this is a Python variable um, and defines what says it's a list. And then it has a, a bit where it says, here's the length of the list. And then it says, okay, you're gonna find the items of our list are gonna be stored in a block of memory over here. And then that block of memory says, okay, here's where each element is stored. Um, and they each then point to something which has, again, something which says, here's what data type it is, here's how big it is, and here's its data. Um, and so in order to get the, uh, any given element, you have to do multiple lookups across all different bits of memory. Whereas the NumPy array on the left, you can see it's much, uh, simpler in structure. There's, again, there's the standard bit that says, this is a numpy array, this is what we're called and, uh, and so on. And then it's got information where it stores a block of the data, um, uh, block of the dimensions, the strides are to do with um, uh, how to access the data, it's to do with how the data is actually set out in memory. But essentially the block of data you're working with is just one, the, 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 the array is just one block of data. Um, and so you get, uh, an easy access to the whole thing. 